So you consider yourself an alien hunter, right? No, that's what everybody else considers me. What would you call yourself? Um, I'm a private investigator, licensed private investigator in the state of Texas, ex-CIA for two years, and was a volunteer, uh, a senior military police officer in the Vietnam War. All that simply means is I bring a heavy investigative background to this phenomenon. I look for evidence. No evidence, no interest. Now you've had your own experiences with some kind of malevolent alien being, right? Well, the experiences I had as a child were, uh, were not uh, malevolent at all in the beginning. Uh, I didn't know what the thing was. It was simply in my room. It was walking away from me whenever I opened my eyes. And I, I wasn't afraid. I wasn't paralyzed. It's 1952. Nobody knew what aliens were back then. Nobody knew anything. So I, I, I was stunned. And so I simply thought, well, who is that? And, and he didn't have any clothes on. I mean, I'm four years old. I mean, it's freezing cold. It doesn't make any sense. So he comes, he hears me thinking, apparently, and turns around and realizes, oh my gosh, he's I've made a mistake, it's awake. In other words, I'm not supposed to remember anything. So as soon as he turns around and looks at me, he has large black eyes that were perfectly round, not the elliptical kind like you see in the movies or whatever. I was an eyewitness for 13 years in 10 events from age four to age 17. My events ended violently at age 17 after I didn't have any more. So that goes back to your issue, the alien hunter thing. What's that all about? What that's all about is they came back and got my son when he was six. Um, life for me is ra rather simple. Um, I like I like to get along with everybody. I, I like that. Uh, you can do whatever you want with me, whenever you know, or alien abduction or whatever you, you want to call it. But when you come take my children, I will hunt you down. So I hunt them that hunted me, and hunted my son, and they're hunting other people's kids too. My bottom line is simply, I don't care about the good guys out there saving the universe or whatever they're doing. I hadn't found any of them yet. If they're there, I'll find them. I'm really kind of more interested in the ones that are really not nice to us. I kind of am interested in that because whenever I do investigation in a murder case or a kidnapping, or let's say you have a child that gets kidnapped, but the strange thing, no people never come up to me and say, you know, there are good kidnappers and bad kidnappers in the universe. No one ever tells me that. All they want is results. Get him. And that's what I do. I hunt him. And I've been close enough uh, three different times. I've, I've, my last time, several years ago, I was within 18 inches of him. So none of that means anything because that's pie in the sky and I could be making all that up. But when I catch him, I guess we'll know. So you said before that you had one case of alien insemination that you actually had proof for. Could you expand on that? We, uh, the women have complained for years that they were artificially inseminated, that they have this second twin inside them, and then when their child's born, the twin, other twin disappears. Well, the strongest evidence I can provide for anyone, and I did in this conference, is I showed all kinds of implants since I discovered that in 1960. And I said, but the worst implant I've ever seen is this one and I showed a sonogram of one of these entities in a lady. We have to have a baseline. One of the big baselines that I've started developing in the last two years is a baseline for um, DNA evidence. One of the DNA evidences we have is when the alien touches you, like if he said, you said, well, he got me, and he, he grabbed me on the arm and we walked down the hall. If that's true, then what we can do is take a specialized black light, 267 nanometers, and find the marks that he actually touched you. The fact that if this is true, the fluorescence that he will leave on you will penetrate your skin subdermally on contact. That's called evidence. Have you had that DNA analyzed? Yes. What did it say? <laughs> what does it say? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not comfortable with the DNA analysis yet. What I am comfortable with is that it was analyzed by a university and by uh, two different people, uh, one with the MA, one with the, uh, a, a doctorate. That was interesting to me, but that doesn't prove anything to me yet because I'm an investigator. I have to be able to take these kind of cases like to a court or a forensic setting. So if the answer, if the, if the evidence stands so far, if that stands, it's peer reviewed and they say, oh my God, this is it, you got it, bang. If that's true, then what uh, we'll be able to say I hope this year, because I'll be back next year, and I hope the DNA work will be done by then. If that's true, then we're probably going to be able to make a real profound, excellent 
statement this year saying we have the DNA.